In this short video, we're going to be demonstrating how uh, our users interact with the RSA Cloud Portal, in particular, how they will enroll their authenticators uh, or authenticator apps, and how they will then log into a Windows 10 domain joined device. So uh, there's a, a few ways of enrolling uh, our users and allowing them to access their authenticators. Uh, in this demo video, we're just showing off one implementation of that, but you can certainly uh, provide ways to or set your policies in such a way that that process can be streamlined uh, and uh, easier for your users to enrol their authenticators. For example, if they are on the trusted Office network, then you may um, streamline that process for them. So first of all, we're going to take this user and we're going to go to the My Page URL. This user has already been linked to RSA by the administrator, they've linked the uh, on-prem Active Directory to the cloud authentication service. Now we can log in with the user name, or the first part of the username, and the Active Directory password. Hopefully we can log in there. Active Directory credentials. Okay, so the user is now logged into the RSA My Page with their Active Directory username and password. The first page they're going to be presented with is the My Applications page. On this page, we could publish bookmarks and single sign on applications or links that the user can use to. Uh, automatically access those other secure applications that they might use on a day-to-day -day basis. For this example, there's no applications published to this user. We are mainly interested in the authenticators. In this demo, we have a higher level of authentication or, or assurance required to access the authenticators page than to access the My Applications page. The reason for this is if your user is going to be modifying, adding, removing, authenticators that are used to confirm their identity, we need to be confident that the user is authorized and, and is who they say they are. Now, if they're on a trusted network, an office LAN, for example, we might say they could access this without providing another level of authentication. This user has no authenticators enrolled, so they cannot provide an authenticator uh, as a factor to log into this page. What we can do though is as an RSA administrator, we can enter, uh, issue them with an, an emergency access code. So I have generated an emergency access code for this user and we will just enter that code. The user now uh, has access to the My Authenticators page and can register an authenticator. Click on plus authenticator and you can see the three different types of authenticators that a user can enroll and self-manage. The first one, RSA Authenticator app, is an application that will run on a mobile device such as Windows, Android or Apple or on a desktop device such as Windows or Apple as examples. This authenticator app will allow the user to generate an OTP and provide um, authentication as well as respond with things like uh, biometrics and uh, approved prompts. Second option is the FIDO security key, so any FIDO compatible key can be used and enrolled within RSA. And third option is the DS100. DS100 is RSA's uh, latest hardware token. It supports OTP code generation as well as uh, FIDO2 compatibility. In this occasion, we're going to log in with the RSA Authenticator app, or sorry, enroll the RSA Authenticator app. You'll see here that there are links providing, um, provided to find those Authenticator apps, but we have already got an app installed, which you can see on the phone here. Uh, this device is an Android device. Uh, so we click on Next. We then have the option of either scanning the QR code or manually entering in the details. So if I open up my RSA Authenticator app, I have a number of accounts here, but none of these accounts are the account that we are using. These are all other demo accounts. So we need to add a new account. 
My camera's face down, so you can't see anything there. And you could manually enter the registration code, email address, organization ID. I'm going to scan the QR code, so you'll have to trust me. I'm going to remove the camera, the phone from the camera, point it at the screen, and it is now enrolling the device as an authenticator for our user. You can see on the device it says credential information has been imported when you press OK there. You can also see on the computer that the uh, authenticate uh, registration was successful. We can also do a quick test, hit the test now button, and it sends this approve prompt, which is one of the authentication methods, to the RSA app. We just press approve, and that confirms with the cloud authentication service that our app is registered. You can see now that our user 2 has a, an Android 13 app enrolled as an authenticator. You can see that it was enrolled today. Um, so now that we have this authenticator enrolled, we will be able to log into our Windows domain uh, using our RSA authentication. So we're just going to log out. Just going to go back to the home screen on the device, on the mobile device. So back at the login screen, you can see that we have user2 here, but just to demonstrate that it is a, a domain user, I'm going to go user02 at our development domain. domain. We put in our Active Directory password and press Enter. If you watch the mobile device, we will probably get a prompt. Uh, no, so the last time I logged in, we selected to use an emergency access code. So if we go to, uh, we could enter the emergency access code, the same emergency access code that I generated for the registration of our authenticators to log into the device, but that would be uh, a temporary measure. So for the purposes of this, we shall choose another method. Underneath, we can say more ways to sign in. This demo environment, we've enabled pretty much all the methods available to us. We have the uh, approve prompt. We have the authenticate app, uh, authenticate devices such as the um, a hardware token with an OTP code, and we can also leverage biometrics on a device if the, the device supports that. So on this occasion, we're going to use the approve prompt. Click on approve, our screen will update, and we get this notification. We can approve or reject that notification immediately. But we can open it and we can see the details. So it's a window, the device we're logging into, date and time, the uh, domain, the RSA domain or organization identity, and the user identity. And then we can either reject or approve that login. So we hit approve. A sig uh, an approved signal is sent back through RSA to the Windows 10 device, and the device is logged into the domain. So we'll demonstrate another authentication method as well. So I'll just log the user out again. Now, by default, when you log into a device or a, uh, a service or log into the RSA portal, it will remember the last authentication method selected. So you will see that we will uh, immediately be generated a, an approved prompt on our device. If I put the right password in. So we get the approve prompt, but this time we don't want to use the approve prompt. We do want to demonstrate another method so we can use the authenticate OTP. So this is the one time passcode that is generated within our app. When we select over to this, you see that we aren't given another uh, approve prompt because that's not the method we're using. We open up the app. We can see our matching account user two and we have that OTP code. You have 35 seconds to enter that code correctly. So we enter that code. 
press the arrow to complete the login and you can see that the login is successful. Now we will just demonstrate one more authentication method. So we'll log out. We log in again with the correct password. You can see that it defaulted to our Authenticate OTP. On this occasion, we don't want to use this method. We select more ways to sign in, and we're going to select biometrics. It sends a signal to the app, and it says, enter your biometrics, scan your fingerprint, and we are logged in. Now, those methods can actually be stacked as well to increase um, assurance, identity assurance, so you can prompt for uh, fingerprint and OTP. Okay, uh, That would be done on a per policy basis, so you might apply different policies to different apps requiring different levels of assurance or identity assurance. So that's it for today. Um, if you found that video useful, uh, please keep an eye on the source that you found it, whether it be LinkedIn or YouTube or your partner, and see if they have any other videos available. Thank you.